Hey, Al, did you see the pro texting and driving take on Twitter? I didn't, but I would love to. Sounds like a Twitter moment. It does. No matter what insane opinion you would think that nobody could, like, defend, someone on Twitter will not just say that it's defensible, they will say that you're indefensible for, like, not acknowledging it in the first place. For not believing that it could happen. It's not that I think that Twitter is full of stupid people. It's just that I think you have to be stupid to tweet. No, I, I, what I really mean is that, like, I think everybody has one area of incredible stupidity within them. Like, I, I don't necessarily... Well, okay, I, there are tweets I see on Twitter where I'm like, I'm smarter than this person without a doubt. But if, you, if I was stupid enough that I tweeted every thought that entered into my head, like once a month, I could get quote tweeted dunked. They would be like, check out this guy's take on like, you know, selenium in head and shoulders or something like that. Can you believe? As my organic chemistry Twitter would be dragging my ass. Although now that I think about it, selenium, I suppose, is not like an element that's necessarily in uh, organic chemistry that's well represented. But anyway, you with the panda fight? I could definitely, if I had tweeted that I thought I could beat a panda in a fight just due to like, you know, a war of attrition, I would probably end up getting... 15% chance I become main character of Twitter for the day. And it would start like, can you believe this guy thinks he stands a chance against a panda? And it would end with like, men are literally so stupid. When they get together, all they talk about is who could beat up a, a bear in a fight. And that's true. You don't have to be smart to not get dragged on Twitter. You just have to be smart enough not to tweet shit that you're an idiot about. Do you think you could land a plane? Um, not, not right now. But if you gave me... I'm not joking. If you gave me 20 hours in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I think that there is a 51% chance that I land the plane in like an, an airplane type situation where they need a pilot. It, like, I know that this sounds ridiculous, but it can't be that hard because they almost never crash anymore. Like in the 70s, like there was a 10% chance when you got on an airplane, you weren't getting off. So you had to really come, you got, before you took a trip to like Disney World, you got your affairs in order. You like made sure it's like, hey, just in case anything happens on this flight, like here's where all my like important documents and shit are. Then like, if you look at the history of like air disasters, there's not that many anymore. They're becoming very infrequent. And the level, the quantity of flights taken goes like through the roof. A pilot has like a 99.99% .99 chance to land the plane correctly. That's an insane level of accuracy. Obviously, they have like a ton of training and experience, right? I'm not saying I'm getting to 99.99%, but I, I think... With just a little training in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I could get to 51. As long as, like, conditions were relatively normal. It wasn't, like, you know, heavy crosswinds or, like, the airport where you have to, like, approach on the beach or something like that. Or, you know, or in the middle of uh, the, the mountains in Nepal. Like, I, I think I could get to 51. I would rather somebody else that is, like, a 95 takes the yoke, honestly. But if it's just... If it's a, like a, a, a Cessna and it's me and the pilot and the pilot has a stroke or something like that, I'm like, all right. I mean, it's, it's either 51% chance to land or 100% or chance to just fucking die. So I guess I'll take my chances. Like at the end of the day, it's, it's not like running the 100 meter dash in nine seconds, right? Like it's not like physically impossible for me to land the plane. It's just buttons. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to make it sound like, you know, it's forehead, but like, you know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's designed to be safe. Again, I'm not, much like the wolf, I'm not saying my odds are like crazy good. I just don't think it's, it's out of the question. Now, yeah, like if you ask me if, like, could I get a rocket to the moon? No. If, if I had to punch the shit into the navigational computer and execute like a controlled burn or something like that, and absolutely not. 
but could I land a, a, a plane? Not right now, but with, with 20, if you give me 20 hours of Microsoft Flight Simulator, yes, absolutely. I, I think that I could have a 51% chance. I mean, I, I know, I'm not even insulting pilots. I think being a pilot is like a stressful job, but I think it's probably not that stressful because of the flying. I think it's probably stressful because, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, my flight's supposed to leave at 3. I get to the airport at like, you know, 1.30 to get ready for it. Oh, the other plane hasn't arrived yet. Oh, the flight crew's late. Oh, like... Um, we like there's a delay in the fuel oh we got to de-ice the wings oh air traffic control like has a grudge against me so they're making me wait on the runway like being a pilot is something that people do professionally but also some people who are like oh i started up like a a health care software company and also i have my pilot's license like it's something people do in their downtime harrison ford is a is a pilot now, taking off is a joke. Like, unless something catastrophic happens, like a bird strike or something like that, I just don't see me crashing on takeoff. You literally... Oh, what am I doing? You literally just put the throttle up, and then when you hit, like, 80 knots, you just start pulling up on the yoke. And then, like, mid-air, it seems like it's impossible to crash, Unless you are in inclement weather, no visibility and like fly into a mountain or something like that, or the plane just breaks, which that's not my fault. I'm not going to take responsibility for the plane breaking. It's only landing that's, that's a, a, a regular occurring risk for me. I feel like it's people that don't fly. Maybe I'm just saying this because it reflects better on my take. I feel like it's non-pilots going, this is an insane take. Whereas a pilot would be like, yeah, probably. Helicopter? Not only would I not fly a helicopter, I would not even get in a helicopter. I would love to never get in a helicopter in my entire life. I, I don't see much reason. I guess you could take a sightseeing tour in a helicopter. Um, I guess you could, do, you could get a good look at the traffic in Los Angeles. You could... I'm always stunned when we like go to Whistler and there's people that are like oh yeah tomorrow I'm doing helicopter skiing like you get on a fucking helicopter and then they fly you to the top of a mountain where like they haven't built a ski lift or like you know groomed the the routes or anything and then they just drop your ass off and they're like see you at the bottom like it it's stunning to me and I mean I, I guess I'm saying that flying is safe and skiing is dangerous but I people may disagree but I kind of believe it I'm amazed ooh, that more people don't die skiing and snowboarding every year. He's done it. Oh, you piece of crap. Like, I feel like one in a hundred people that are skiing should be dead by the end of the day. And it's crazy that there's only like, you know, a maybe a, a, a death a year at most resorts or something like that. I'm just going to be honest. I don't know if I, if I can do this. And I'm, I'm now, I'm mad at Apollo. Oh! <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, you got me. You got me good. I was so pissed off that I that you were gonna have to like after all that I'm like if you wanted to put another idea in the level just build a whole new level okay you don't put the hardest shit at the end when you've already done all this hard stuff just because there's no checkpoint anyway it's a good level my father was a flight instructor flight sim is pretty accurate to real life as far as the controls but not accurate to the other real world aspects of flight and lift that being said you would have a why'd you capitalize you you would have a 50% chance to land the plane with 20 hours of flight sim. Hey, look at that! I got... I, okay, listen. I'm a little offended because what I said was not 50. I said 51. And you're, you're leaving me there at 50, which feels like a deliberate choice. Well, I, I read it in the Joker's voice at first. My father was a flight instructor. 
Well, that's it. I'm, I guess I'm not trying to say like I would be a, as good as a pilot. Because, like, you don't... I, I guess what I'm saying is pilots don't undergo that much training to be able to, like, fly a plane on a normal day. They probably, like, show up at flight school with enough hours in the simulator to, to do that. But it's like, you know, when it's a, a damn hurricane or something like that, or when there's a bird strike, or, or when there's heavy crosswinds on takeoff and landing, or, like... You know, when you get, when you're mid-flight and you get this error message or something like that. Absolutely not true. Wait, really? people show up to flight school and they're like, I've never even been on an airplane. It just seems like something I'd like. Like, I know you can do that for like biology, but I don't know, I don't know if people do that for, for pilot school. Really? They just show up and they're like, well, I've always loved jumping. So this just seemed like a logical, the logical next step. Me when I'm mid-flight and then NVIDIA says there's a new driver available. Me when autopilot breaks because um, Microsoft Windows says let's cross this one off your list. <laughs> when you've delayed your, your, the Windows update in your Boeing 787 too many times so it stops allowing you to snooze it. It just says you either do it now or we shut off your computer forever.